begin with electronic pickpockets. Wireless chip te technology may allow for speedy transactions without the need for PIN numbers or signatures, but it's being exploited by crooks. Frank Pangello reveals just how simple it is and what you can do to protect yourself. It's so easy to steal this, this information. Wireless technology is increasingly ruling our lives. It's everywhere, keeping us connected to the world and making it easier to spend money with just a tap. Paywave is simply wireless technology. Um, it's using an RFID-based technology to transfer data between the POS terminal and the card to retrieve your personal details uh, to make the transaction. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. It's been around for a very, very long time. It's only in recent times that it's been adopted uh, more as a mainstream. Uh, most mobile phones now have a version of RFID built into them. IT expert Andrew Huxtable from Geek even has a micro-sized RFID chip built into him. I use for various access around my house and, and the office. It works all the time. Um, I, it, it's now become part of my life. I, it just doesn't even, I don't even think about it. With Visa Paywave, you can pay with a minimum of fuss and uh, movement. No problem at all. Now you might already have one of these. If you haven't, you'll eventually get one from your bank. The symbol tells you the card is armed with RFID technology, or Paywave and PayPass. The Paywave, it's making our lives easier and theoretically quicker uh, to make transactions, things like that. But how secure is this technology? Well, you're about to see how seriously flawed it is using a smartphone. I managed to be able to successfully uh, read the cards. Um, we've also successfully made transactions without the card present. Is it possible to steal that information? Can we electronically pickpocket somebody's card without them knowing? Absolutely. Um, within seconds of glancing past someone, we can secure their full credit card number, uh, the expiry on the card, and more than likely the uh, name on the card as well. To do this, Andrew is using a popular model Android phone with RFID. It's there to enable data transfers between similar phones at a touch. I had the process down pat within about an hour. Then with the addition of a free app, which we won't reveal here, the phone is now an electronic pickpocket. We simply pretend that the phone is actually a card reader at a POS terminal, and we place the card under the phone. We read the details from the card, simple as that. We now have the ability to replay that tag and read it on a reader. And there it is. Here's how easy it is to be an electronic pickpocket using an RFID enabled phone. Now, Andrew has just stolen my credit card details on this phone, and I'm going to use it to buy some goods. We'll show you what happened in a moment. I think Paywave is actually wrong. In the concept, people who want it can use it. But the fact that it was forced on us with no way of stopping it, I think that sets a really dangerous precedence. Colin's worried about Paywave, but his bank has given him no choice, and that really irks him. When companies can get away with forcing something on you, other companies will try, and that becomes a normal thing. I think it really is a social justice issue. Now he's decided to disable his RFID chip. The easiest way uh, is to shield the, the cards from RFID readers. Um, if that can be as simple as a bit of aluminium foil around the card. Um, there is actually a way to mechanically disable the antenna in the card as well by punching a hole through it with a hole punch, um, which will stop it from being read by Paywave stations. Or you can simply gouge it from your card. Now back to our shopping exercise. I'm using the phone containing my bank card information swiped by Andrew. Proved. Worked. And here's what I bought using this phone as a PayWave card. Andrew, that was simple. Very, very simple. The financial institutions would be aware that there could be flaws in the system, wouldn't they? The potential for fraudulent transactions is fairly low in monetary value, uh, so they don't see it as being a, a massively important issue. That's why you can only use tap cards for transactions up to $100. More than that, and you'll need a PIN number. Andrew says cloning or stealing your card details also has limitations. 
So if I wanted to make a second transaction on a card, I'd have to read the card a second time. The cards have an internal incremental counter, uh, which goes up every time. So if there is a duplicate transaction, the back end systems in the banks will be able to determine that that was not a correct and, and true transaction. We're losing control of our own decisions.